Hey guys, how we doing today? Welcome back to the Chaos Vibration. This is Damian James, and yes, we are doing another pop culture magic episode, and yes, it's a podcast today, because that's what creative intuition feels like doing. Once again, I am letting, or trying to let go of control and just let things be as they are, and it is a work in progress. But anyway, what I want to talk about today is doing internal work, such as healing childhood trauma, dissolving subconscious blocks, whatever, using pop magic, and also share some insights that I think can benefit occultists, manifestors, spiritual practitioners, pick your spiritual boner word, yes, we all have them, who struggle with this aspect of the practice because it really comes down to knowing thyself. And when I say spiritual boner word, I'm not picking on anyone. Clearly, the word chaos is one of my spiritual boner words. I think it's time to ask ourselves if maybe one of the other reasons we struggle is we just take our shit way too goddamn seriously sometimes. But anyway, back to the point, what I want to talk about today, or the question I want to raise is from a quote-unquote chaos perspective, when it comes to dealing with blocks or healing trauma, are people actually using symbols, metaphors, archetypes, call it what you will, that the aspect of self with the block is actually receptive too. Yes, I know that sounded very meta, very vague, and very jargony. We're going to elaborate on that in today's episode. This episode is going to be anecdotal. We're going to be talking about some of my experiences here that are experiments in progress and the revolute or the revelations I've come to as to why pop magic could be more effective. So let's just get right to it. You guys know the drill as always. Question me, question everything, figure out what works for you. Long time viewers, thank you. New time viewers, hit the bell and subscribe notification for more content in the future. I'll also include some playlists of some not pop magic stuff for the new viewers who want to get a more holistic idea of the other things this channel has to offer, such as gallery of magic, chaos magic, law of attraction, all that good jazz. Okay, so. Before we even say anything, I want to use an example, and this is not to make a pop magic prep rally. Um, most people have seen the movie, I think it's Big Daddy with Ad Adam Sandler, right? Where the kid just doesn't listen to anyone, and then Adam Sandler has to dress up like Scuba Steve and say this shit to get the kid to change his mind simply because the kid looks up to Scuba Steve. It resonates with the kid for one reason or another. It's emotionally engaging. What Stu Scuba Steve says just makes sense to the kid and makes it click, whatever. The moral of the story here I'm trying to convey is that, right out of my own experience, the things I see in others, is instead of doing the Scuba Steve approach, they're taking this hyper-traditional, hyper-intellectual approach to deal with their blocks. Now, before I say anything, I'm not letting religion off the fucking hook here. Business is my own, and it could have something to do with it. I was the only minority in a K-12 through school with a lot of Christians, some closet KKK members, so I fucking hate religion, but I really don't care if somebody else likes Christian stuff. And it just made me completely amb ambivalent about the thing. And this happened at a very young age. Fast forward to this point, or last year, I'm doing a lot of Luciferian stuff. To try and clear out blocks. And of course, I'm not knocking Luciferianism. It's whatever, your jam is your jam. We're doing all the shit. We're saying the Lord's Prayer backwards and all this stuff. And I'm either getting angry, nothing's happening, or a block dissolves. And then it comes back with a vengeance in a very short period of time. There were several workings involved, so this may get conflated. We were doing some scrying, working with multiple spirits, trying to change these aspects of self. And Lucifer himself said, so let me get this fucking straight. You're trying to use religious things to heal patterns or aspects of self that are not receptive to religion at all. Are you surprised that nothing is changing in your reality? So with that being said, let me talk about some periods in my life where I found doing something more pop magic -y 
are seeming to bring better results. And once again, these are works in progress. So maybe I'll do an update at some point. Maybe I won't. I will see. But let's start here. Let's start with when I was a kid. When I was a kid, I really, really, really loved baseball. And my family were Met fans. So at least a couple years, I wished upon candles to be a New York Met. Little bit of a detour here. I want people to consider what kids do with candles to make a wish. And how that's very similar to things like candle magic. You stare at a candle, you think about what you want, you generate the emotion, the feeling, and you blow it out, right? We could argue if that's unconscious magic or not. That's not the point. The point is, is that there was a lot of desire and intent put around being a fucking Mets fan. Of course, as I got older, I came to some startling conclusions. The Mets suck. They're fucking choke artists. In my family, um, I would argue being a Mets fan was kind of a religion for us. Um, as I got older, I wanted to be a Yankees fan or an Atlanta Braves fan or a Boston Red Sox fan. And that would be like telling a Christian family, I want to be a Satanist tomorrow. It just didn't go well. And I got, and if I asked why, it was the Yankees are evil. They are the devils. They are big business. And this is where all the shit about money was evil came. It's cheap and easy. Anyone can do that. Rooting for the Yankees is like rooting for Chase Manhattan Bank, so on and so forth. On the converse, it was being a Mets fan is character. It is noble. It is not easy. It makes you stronger. Keep in mind, we're kids, so we don't reason very well. I think the wise can see where this is going. So there, that's when I've come to the conclusion that a lot of my blocks came from my desire to be a New York Met, and then all the things I was told about this, right? And then I had to stop and ask myself, okay, what came up for me when I contemplated on literally the Met symbol? Once again, being a choke artist, not having any money, not being successful, all of this shit that's not going to be good for the results oriented magician or somebody who wants to pretty much be a winner, pretty much created an anchor that when something like, if I'm a fucking loser, it means I am somehow being a good Met or a Met fan while I don't even fucking care about baseball. So then we came to a conclusion, and I haven't done this working. I have some have done some divination to suggest it's worth giving it a try. I'm not going to lie, but I do want to share this shoot while it's off the top of my head. Um, and ask myself things like, well, what if I did things like, instead of saying the Lord's Prayer backwards, which just was jargon, 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 empty headed nonsense, knocked out all the vowels of the Met song, rewrote it backwards, repeated that incantation, and then maybe on the full moon, ran around the bases 10 times, burned some fucking Met cards of those players, symbolic of me reversing this pattern. And then maybe I ran around a couple times in the proper direction with the Yankees or good players or something that changed my relationship and understanding of success specific, specifically for that six to 10 year old. Worth taking into consideration before we even do the work. And once again, as always, that's a common thing with pop magic is... I don't think people are using the right symbols or anchors. Another example from a previous episode is, yes, I can use the Master Sword to cast circles or clear space or send energy back at people. And people will be like, but Damien, why didn't that work? This doesn't work. And I need to say, well, did you spend, you know, hundreds and hundreds of hours playing Zelda games? Were you a, I'm not bragging, pro gamer who played Link in Super Smash Brothers Melee? Another simple one being, when the spin attack comes out, it means get off my back, it is fucking poning time. That anchor was generated from my own experience. Now, why am I saying all this once again? Um, mileage may vary, and if you really feel that religion is what did it for you, then go that route. But I think for a lot of people, one of the reasons we may struggle, grew up lost, is because religion may have just been, if it didn't scare the life out of us, may have just been dead fucking minutia for us, so that's not going to create a very strong anchor. For people that want more, allow me to elaborate on another one. 
Um, obviously, then I got a little bit older, and I desired to be a punk rocker. No, I didn't wish on candles, but, uh, you know, I hung all the pictures in my room and sang all the songs stoned, you know, drunk in these altered states of consciousness. And I used to say with my finger in the air, I'll have died by the time I was 25 because it means I'll have lived the way I wanted to. Self-destruction is the most powerful or, or the greatest form of self-empowerment because Sid Vicious said these things. Or another one I used to love to say was, um... Tyler Durden Fight Club. Uh, what was it? Self self development is masturbation, something like that. I said these things mindlessly because I was cool, you know. Um, I wanted to. Part of me wanted to be like these things. Of course, we know the subconscious goes your wish is my fucking command. If and magic takes the path of least resistance. So if you can't be a punk rocker, you'll have experiences that will manifest that. Or you know, you can't be a New York man. It will give you experiences that manifest that. Same thing with the Tyler Durden example, and I know that may be more relatable for people. But going back to these, you know, just using punk rock as an example, I, I, I once again, while I love it, had to sit and ask myself, kind of like the Mets, what is punk rock dogma without getting into labels about what it is or isn't, say, about success? Generally, it has an underlying belief that goes, if you're successful, you're fucking up. Not selling records is a key to success. And what we do is we over-intellectualize and say, well, the class were on major labels. And Greg Graffin of Bad Religion was a UCLA philosophy professor. But we also say that the subconscious doesn't do well with intellectual or conceptual ideas. And do we not pick up on how fucking conceptual and intellectual that reasoning is? I'm not saying this is the full case, but at least those aspects itself probably don't give a shit. I was also an atheist once again, so that may be a little bit more subjective, but allow me to illustrate an example. Let's just say, for instance, um, I had a block that kind of desired to be like Sid Vicious or looked like Sid Vicious, right? Do I really think now that I'm going to put Sid Vicious in a triangle and say, hey, Sidney? In the name of Archangel Michael, you shall stop this nonsense. I'm not disrespecting Michael, but I want to raise a practical question here that very simply goes, do we fucking know who Sid Vicious is? He doesn't fucking listen to anybody. And he probably doesn't give a fuck about who Michael is. Once again, as I say with pop magic, are you going to try and command... Darth Vader in the name of EAOA, he's not going to give a fuck. He doesn't know who EAOA, EAOA is. You know, so we need to take into account that these aspects of self ask for things, and maybe these are where these blocks are coming from. We always blame the schools and the teachers, and I think that's part of it too, but what about your innocent desires like that? Um, I think a more relative example can be for a lot of people, especially if you were an atheist, it's worth asking if you were like me, you just tuned out Christianity and were playing Game Boy on Sunday, right? But you spent a lot of time watching Disney movies or playing video games that really is like magician or bad people or it doesn't end well for them or they can't control their shit. You're going to try and do magic now. You may have to take a look at that. I'm not saying you can't watch these things ever, but, y y you know, you you really need to ask yourself that question. A, a silly example could be, you know, um, let's say you really love Lord of the Rings like I did as a kid, and you tried to get a magic ring. And now everything you're doing in your magical practice is backfiring or not manifesting at all. What does Lord of the Rings preach about magic rings? Especially if you want to be a quote-unquote white magician. Or you get a magic ring and you're you're tempted all of a sudden to do f what you would consider to do fucked up shit. There's an anchor. If you want to know what anchors are, go back and read, ha read back, go back and read hands on chaos magic. You know, and we could say, well, Gandalf has a magic ring too, but that's going back to the, well, the sex pistols are on major labels. The subconscious may not care if it made that association and it's deep in the subconscious. You got to do the work there. You've got to look at the shit like that. So in conclusion, what do we do with this information? Well, the, the way I look at it is try and bring in a relative pop culture median. 
um, medium here. For example, this is going to sound contradictory. Um, maybe in the Sid Vicious example, you know, work with an archetype like Joe Strummer to say, hey, look, you can be a punk and be successful and still be authentic and still move people. Something along those lines. If um, you like Disney movies and Lord of the Rings at the same time and thought, oh, wizards and witches are evil. And you're like Gandalf, maybe use Gandalf as a medium there. I'm not going to give you all the recipes here. Do your own work, do your own experiments. And then say to yourself, you know. Sorry, lost my train of thought. Oh, look, here's Gandalf. Here's another magician to disprove that claim. Something along those lines or another Lord of the Rings example. You know, something like use magic swords. They have a lot of more positive properties in that world. The, you know, these are just a few examples. I could go on all day. I did a few shoots, but I think this one's the most concise to get um, the point across. And going back to this, I'm not saying it makes it better or worse or trying to sound official. These are things that also came up when I was working with the quote unquote official Lucifer Morningstar. Once again, he's like, why are you saying the Lord's Prayer backwards? Look at this baseball shit. And these are... Um, Rituals I'm working on now, once again, that I'm very confident to try and probably won't ever do an update because that at that point will be my own private experience and or gnosis, while I don't like that word. But I just want people to, uh, you know, ask themselves that question. Does a seven-year-old self care what a chakra is? Why use it? Not saying don't use it, use it for something else. In conclusion, whether you like pop magic or not, I, well, what I want anyone who's interested to ask themselves are basically... What the fuck was going on in my life when I feel this block developed? What was I paying attention to, positive or negative? You know, if I had a relation, if a girl didn't like me in school, did I cope with that listening to a lot of Fallout Boy or Emo or this shit where, you know, it just affirmed it further? Um, was I maybe listening to rap once again or punk that basically said, hey, being successful is bad? You might have to do some work around that. It, it, it's very simple. And then see, once again, how you can maybe do something that'll be relative to that aspect of self, a different genre of music or whatever, to not completely obliterate the block, but at least start weaning off it and transitioning it to something new step by step. Maybe work with different musicians, right? Maybe work with, once again, the Joe Strummer, then slowly get away from punk or something else. Or find a new way to use it entirely. And what my experience does yield, well, I've done with other things like using the ghost trap to banish spirits, because five-year-old me wanted to be a ghostbuster, right? Um, or working with Robin Hood instead of playing the money's all evil game and saying you love it out of nowhere. Um, what it does seem to appreciate, if nothing else, is even if you don't get the symbols right, it's more receptive to work with you because those acts show. I'm taking you into account instead of trying to command you in the name of whatever and state give you all these rules. And the only other point I want to add here is this brought up another thing, which is that a lot of us try and do internal work the way our parents parented us. You will think positive. You will be grateful for these things. That's like saying you will go to church on Sunday and you will believe this shit. Some people may like this episode, some may not. Those that are on the fence or those that really want to let this settle in, not for my sake, please play this a few times and take into consideration what I'm saying here. And whether it's pop magic or not, find the symbols that will work for that aspect of self in that time of its life and start creating new anchors or reverse engineering the old. That concludes this video. People that were wise or insightful enough to get it, um, I wish you the best of luck. And once again, when it comes to doing this, you are on your own because only you know what symbols or ideas or experiences have reinforced those beliefs. Take care, everybody. I'll see you on the next shoot. Yes, we do. We'll do more pop magic once again, or we will do more practical magic, the gallery of magic and stuff like that when I feel inspired. Um, but this is where I am right now. So for those that want to stay with me, hit the bell and subscribe notification, drop comments. If you have other ideas to inspire me in another direction, you can also support me on Patreon for a couple dollars a month. That being said, take care, everybody. Best of luck. Eudaimonia.
Hope everyone's doing all right in this crazy world.